I think the definition of greatness is to inspire the people next to you. Yeah, I, I think that's what greatness is or should be. It's, it's not something that's, that, that lives and dies with one person. Mm. It's how can you inspire a person to then in turn inspire another person that then inspires another person. And that's how you create something that I think lasts forever. Yeah. And uh, I think that's our challenge as people is to, um, is to figure out how our story can impact others and mm. motivate them in a way to create their own greatness. There's a quote from uh, one of my English teachers at Lower Marion named uh, uh, Mr. Fisk. He had a great quote that said, rest at the end, not in the middle. And that's something I always live by. You know, I'm not gonna rest, I'm gonna keep on pushing now. There are a lot of answers that I don't have, even questions that I don't have. But I'm just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna keep going and I'll figure these things out as we go, right? And you just continue to build that way. So that, I try to live by that all the time. And what brings you the most joy right now? Being with my family. Really? That is, man, that is the most fun. It's just, um, you know, it's uh, hanging out with them all summer, uh, being able to, to like, do things that I ordinarily couldn't do. Yeah. Because uh, of training, because of sure. season and stuff like that. So being around them and watching Bianca grow up, because there are a lot of things that I miss with Natalia and Gianna because mm. I was playing. So being there every day with them is so much fun, man. So it brings me the most joy. What does love feel like? Hmm. Happiness is such a, I mean, I think I would describe love as happiness. I think I'd describe it as a beautiful journey. Mm. Um, you know, it has its ups and downs, right? Whether it's in marriage, or whether it's in the career, you know, things are never perfect. But through love, you continue to persevere and you mm. move through them. You move through them. And then through that storm, beautiful sun emerges. Yeah. Right? And inevitably, another storm comes. And guess what? You ride that one out too. Yeah. So I think love is a certain determination and persistence to go through the good times and the bad times with the someone or something uh, that you truly love. My parents were, were great. You know, growing up, you know, they instilled in me the importance of imagination and of curiosity. And understanding that, okay, if you want to accomplish something, I'm not just going to sit here and say, yes, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, but you have to also put in the work to get there, right? So they taught me that at a really early age, man. And uh, when you grow up as a kid thinking that the world is your oyster, and all things are possible if you put in the work to do it, you, know, you grow up having that fundamental belief. My mom was there on a daily basis. Uh, my father uh, was really influential at a really critical time where I, you know, I had a summer where I played basketball when I was like 10 or 11 years old in a very prominent summer league in Philadelphia called the Sunny Hill League. Where my father played, my uncle played, and they were like all-time greats yeah. and some stuff. And Will Chamberlain played in the league, you know, uh, Earl of Pro Monroe played in the league. And here I come playing and I don't score one point the entire summer. Really? Not one. How old were you? 11, 10, 11. And you're playing against other 10, 11 year olds? Uh -huh. or and you didn't score once? Not one. Were you in the game? I was in the game. How did you not score? Because I was terrible. Really? <laughs> yeah. That At happened. 10, 11 years old, you were that Awful. Terrible. I mean, I, you know, and I had these big knee pads on because I was no. growing really fast. I had socks all the way up here and I had like the high top skinny, fade, yeah. like skinny as hell. And I scored not a free throw, not a nothing, not a lucky shot, not a breakaway layup, zero points. And I remember crying about it and being upset about it. And my father just gave me a hug and said, listen, whether you score zero or score 60, I'm going to love you no matter what. Wow. Now that is the most important thing that you can say to a child. Because from wow. there, I was like, okay, that gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. I have the security there. But to hell with that, I'm scoring 60. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> right, right. Right. And from there, I just went to work. And I just wow. I stayed with it. And I kept practicing, kept practicing, kept practicing. You know, when you're in, a, in this culture, in our society, you can do some phenomenal things individually, um, but they'll never reach their full potential unless you do them collectively. And you have to figure out how to do that. The challenge for me was always uh, compassion and empathy. I think about 09, things started changing for okay. me. I started really uh, making a conscious effort to better understand. And that doesn't mean I mean, you have compassion and empathy so you go soft. It's more like you, you, put, you put yourself to the side 
You put yourself in their shoes and understand what they're feeling. And then you have to make certain decisions of, okay, what buttons do I need to push for this yeah. player to get them to the next level? So it's never, it's not sit around and all, it's all happy-go-lucky right. type of thing. Your leader, your job is to get the best out of them, um, even if you know, they may not like it at that time. One of the things that I had to learn is how to get the best out of my teammates. Yeah. And most people think it's a simple thing, you know, passing the ball. You know, but that's not how you make guys better. You have to really affect their behavior. How do you do that? So, yeah, you know, like, you know, I would tell guys, you got to back to backs. You know, I don't care if we're in Miami. I don't care if we're in a great city of Chicago. We can't go out. We got to get rest. Right? Back to back games. Back to back games, yeah. right? Monday, Tuesday. You play Monday and play again Tuesday. Guys aren't going to listen, right? You don't, you know, right. So a few times I said, all right, well, I'll go out. We'll go out <laughs> together. Really? I'm, I'll drink with you, right? But the next morning, I'm banging on your door at five in the morning. Let's go. They're not getting Where are we going? <laughs> I hung out with you. Now you come hang out with me. Wow. This is what we do, all right? Let's go. And we're at the gym. We're working out, right? We hit the bus. We go to practice. We play that night. And they're dead. And they're dead. And they're like, oh, lesson learned. Really? <laughs> lesson so learned. Take them out once. Listen, if you're going to do that, do that. But don't let that compromise what we're here to do. Right. This is why we're here. This is why you're here in the first place. Well, what does losing feel like to you? Uh, it's exciting. Why is it exciting? Um, because it means you have different um, ways to get better. There are certain things that you can figure out that you can take advantage of, right? Certain weaknesses that were exposed mm. um, that you need to shore up, right? So it was exciting. I mean, it, it sucks to lose, right. but at the same time, there are answers there if you just look at them. I'll give you an example. So uh, Katie Lou Samuelson is one of the best college basketball players in the country. She plays at UConn. She's going to be a senior. And uh, they just had a really tough season last year where they lost to Notre Dame in the final. And so I asked her, I said, have you watched the Notre Dame game? She was like, no. I said, well, why not? She said, I don't want to watch that. I said, I know you don't, but you're going to play Notre Dame this year, yeah? Yeah. What's the chances you see him again in the final? I said, well, you probably see him again. I said, well, you can't show up and play them without knowing why you lost that one, right? So, you know, it, it, the mistakes that you've made in that game, you have to do the hard stuff and watch that game and study that game to not make those mistakes over and over again just because you weren't brave enough to face it. So she came down to the office. I brought her down to the office and we sat down and we watched that game together. Wow. Right? And you got to got to deal with face it. it. Got to deal with it. Face it, learn from it. When you play for 20 years, I play for 20 years, you reach a certain level, you're like, okay, wait a minute. I have to start again at the base of a mountain and try to climb the top of this mountain. First of all, what mountain am I climbing? I don't even know like what the hell am I going to be doing? And it be it's very it's very scary. Mm. It's very scary. Even for you. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And the thing that helped me actually was hurting my Achilles. Because that forced me to sit there and say, okay, the day could be today that your career is over. Now what do you do? You have these ideas about doing something with your life after basketball. But what if today is the day that you, that's it. Now what do you do? So I had all this time sitting there with my Achilles injury and contemplating and thinking. And I said, I better get to work. <laughs> wow. And that was that. The mentality book is, is really about um, process and craft. I've broken the book up into two sections. And process is really about the process of preparing, mm -hmm. you know, through injury, recovery, uh, studying of the game. And then the craft is the actual performance and the tactics. And so a lot of things that I learned uh, through the game were through photos. You can look at a photo wow. and see like a player making a move, look at the angle of his feet, look how he's using his hands on defense. And I can really break down things to the smallest detail through that. And that's what you'll see in this book. I mean, it's really a basketball Bible. You'll see how I break things down, like how I'm looking at things to the smallest of detail. Yeah. And uh, that's the best way to understand how to have that kind of mentality is to ask questions, and then find answers. And mm. then that lead to more questions and you find more answers. And that's what yeah. the book is. So how can we teach our children what it means to work hard? Well, you do it through training, right? So when I get up in the morning, my daughter goes with me. 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. My 15-year-old goes with me. She wow. goes with me before school, and it becomes a daddy-daughter thing. That's cool. She just got a permit, right? So she drives in the morning. It becomes a cool thing, right? But through that process, she understands the value.